everybody. Uh, Evan with Overgrown Cannabis here. I'm on my way to visit uh, and interview Hillary Hodge. She's running for Board of Supervisors in Nevada County in District 3. So let's check it out. So I am here today with Hillary Hodge. How's and, it going? And uh, you're running for uh, District Supervisor of, of District 3 in Nevada County. That's correct. Yep. And, and that pretty much encompasses most of the downtown Grass Valley area? Yep. So, um, Squirrel Creek, Cedar Ridge, and some unincorporated areas along highways 20 and 49. Awesome. Yeah. Well, maybe first you could tell us a little bit about your background and what got you into county politics. That's an interesting question. So, my background, I am currently the executive director of Sierra Commons, which is Nevada County's small business education center, and I've been interested in economic development in our community. So I've been working with small businesses, with startups, working on business plans, um, working with current businesses who are moving more into an online economy, mm. working with marketing because marketing has changed a lot yeah. in recent years. And as a part of working with community members and their businesses and local businesses, I got really interested in economic development. The County Board of Supervisors sets the economic development plan for the community. Mm -hmm. So when I started looking into some of the ways in which our Board of Supervisors were using taxpayers' money to focus on trying to attract Silicon Valley companies up mm -hmm. here, uh, they started a virtual reality incubator that failed in the first year, I started to get really frustrated about the direction of our economy particularly for young people in our community. We yeah. don't have a lot of opportunities for young people. Um, and, you know, as a young person myself, I got kind of depressed watching all of my friends move away for better opportunities. Right. I wanted my friends to stay here. And frankly, they wanted to be able to stay in the community as well. I have a lot of people in my life who now live in the Bay Area because yeah. that's where the jobs were. Sure. But they want to come home and they want to raise their kids here. So I want to change the economic direction of our community to include the future. And I'm a part of that future and I'm a voice for the future. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, now you're running against Dan Miller. I am. And he's the incumbent. Yes. And maybe you could draw a distinction, like you were saying with this, you're really interested in people being able to pursue small business here and having economic opportunity here. So maybe you could say, you know, what is Dan Miller's position on that sort of thing? You know, it's interesting. So he was one of the major proponents of Measure W, um, which was uh, basically a ban, the outdoor ban outdoor grows. Cultivation. Um, and that got the electorate very fired up in this county. It did. And no. in my experience, our economy is very tied to the cannabis community. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not an emerging economy by any means. Yeah, in, it's been here for a while. Yeah, in our county. Yeah. It's really integrated into the rest of the businesses in our community as well. So, for example, we have restaurants in Nevada City. Their best quarter is the third quarter. Right. In most tourist towns, it's the summer, but that's not the case for us. Because of all the, the work that comes into the county at that harvest time of the year. Yeah. And then that, that's putting people in the restaurants, going to the grocery stores, the hardware stores. All these places are booming because of that. Right. So you see a future for legal cannabis in our county. I do. And I, and I think there's a present here that hasn't been acknowledged yes. by the current board and certainly not by my opponent. Sure. And I think that we could go in a better direction and integrate that economy into our whole economy in the community. And so, I think it will be to the benefit of our entire county. Absolutely. So maybe you could talk a little bit about how you see legal cannabis moving forward in the county with Hillary Hodge as a supervisor. Yeah, so I'm, I'm for tax and regulate. You sure. know, we have a number of people in the cannabis economy, in the cannabis community, who really want to be a part of legal cannabis. They're ready to be recognized. They're ready to follow whatever ordinance comes forward um, within reason. You know, we still want business to be able to be done in our community. Sure. Um, so, you know, with with the cannabis community in mind, being able to bring people who have traditionally been in the shadows, mm. who've been afraid about retaliation, who worry, um, you know, within the Prop 205 sort of um, 
industry that you know there were some there were a lot of gray areas now yeah. with prop 64 and legal recreational cannabis there was a pretty clear mandate from the voters of california about legalization yeah. and you know when you have the good players doing the right thing you can weed out the bad players yeah i agree we i think the good players just want to know how do we play you know right we want to have some rules so that we can get into compliance and so we can come out of the shadows like you said yeah. um well, I think that's great, and uh, I wanted to ask you also, because I know it's a big issue here in Grass Valley, um, what's your position on homelessness here? I know that you've presented some solutions, because I know that's an issue that affects particularly your district here in yeah. Grass Valley. Yeah, so there are going to have to be partnerships formed, particularly with the city of Grass Valley and the county. There was a low-income housing project proposed for Old Tunnel Road that the Housing Authority had targeted as a really reasonable project. There was funding for it and it was turned down uh, by the City Council of Grass Valley because it was going to be a burden on the services here, fire and, and the hospital and police. Mm -hmm. um, we do have some staffing issues. I think that, you know, there are some there are some places where we could maybe expand staffing um that would be particularly in my position as supervisor for the sheriff's office right um in order to help balance out some of the burden on the city of grass valley with sure. regard to services we, it's, it's such a tough issue yeah it is know. a tough issue but it's also about you know short-term pain long-term gain mm. um or short-term gain and long-term pain if we invest up front in, you know, the people who are struggling in our community, if we keep them off the street through rapid rehousing program, through uh, temporary shelters, through uh, placement, through vouchers, things like that, it'll save the county money on the other end. Yeah. Um, you know, chronic homelessness is, is very costly. It's very it expensive to maintain. Um, the services needed to help the people who are in most need. So a little bit of investment up front, making sure that people can avoid homelessness in yeah. the first place. Um, it, it's going to take housing stock. We need to build affordable housing. We need to build low and very low income housing in our community. Um, much of our community, our homelessness, um, you know, in most communities, it's primarily vets and it's children who are in the foster system who timed out. Mm -hmm. um, according to our Health and Human Services Director here in our communities, 15% of our homeless population are children. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, that's a community crisis. That's yeah. a, that's a, it's not just about, you know, services. At that point, it's, it's about humanity. Absolutely. We need to do better. So, you know, you start on the front end with affordable housing. You work on the back end to help the people who are currently chronically homeless. Um, much of hospitality houses shelter, you know, these are people who are, are traditionally not chronically homeless. These are people who are working in our community. They have right. full-time jobs and they couldn't find another They can't apartment. find a place because it's so hard to find housing here. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Well, that's an issue that's near to my heart because I'm a former homeless person. So I think that that's great that that's something that you're tackling and I know it is a, a complex complex issue but I think that's good that you're willing to, to face that head-on yeah um, is there any other issues that you wanted to to, to highlight um, we need high-speed internet for our whole community high-speed internet yeah so yeah. there are a lot of obstacles you know utilities are hard mm. but there are a couple of pieces of legislation that are coming through the state of California that have to do with fire, but it's incentives to in-ground utilities. Yeah. So if we're gonna open the streets up and bury some of our electrical, which we should, I think as yeah. a fire prevention measure, that's imperative. Sure. Um, but let's let's throw some fiber in there. Let's, let's get, get some, some fiber in there yeah, while we got it open. Yeah, let's get some broadband open, going. Well, so well, that, you can't. I won't argue with yeah. that. I won't yeah. argue with that. I mean, we all use the internet more and more, and I know, especially with a lot. I mean, this may not affect your district as much, but a lot of the rural people have a real hard time getting internet. And yeah. So, um, so that's great. Yeah. Um, and then I know you have uh, a debate coming up. Tomorrow, tomorrow night, is that right? A couple March, of them. So, March 4th. Maybe give us the schedule of that. Yeah, so March 4th 
at 6 p.m. at the Nevada County Association of Realtors. Okay, and I have the address. I, I got the address down. It's uh, 336 Crown Point Circle in Grass Valley, or you can Google it. And we'd love to have people come out and check that out. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be great. And then on April 17th, that's a Tuesday, there's a back-to-back -back forum hosted by the Nevada County Cannabis Alliance and uh, the Nevada County Food Policy Council. Oh, cool. So that's going to be one long night, and that's on April 17th at the Nevada Theater. Okay. That'll be broadcast on KVMR. Thank you, Community Radio. Awesome. We love KVMR. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then on the 19th, the League of Women Voters are hosting all three of the supervisor candidates. Sue Hook is running a District 4 on a post. Okay. And that will be at the Rood Center, and that's hosted by the League of Women Voters, and they'll okay. be moderated. And awesome. So, I remember when they used to host the presidential debates yeah, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, that's great. And then how do people find out more about Hillary Hodge and the campaign and how they can get involved? Yeah, so they can go to Facebook slash Vote Hodge. Uh, Facebook yeah. slash Vote Hodge. You can also go to my website, HillaryHodgeForSupervisor.com. That's spelled Hillary with one L and four spelled all the way out, F-O-R. Uh, my platform is there if you want to know more about the other issues that I care about, and you can contact me through there as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Hillary. Yeah, I really was great. appreciate I really it. Really and appreciate it. Yeah, and I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed our interview with Hillary Hodge. Uh, I want to stress that neither myself nor Overgrown Cannabis uh, endorses any candidate, or and uh, we weren't paid for the interview. I wanted to highlight some of the local politics going on and also encourage people to get involved with local politics. Local politics are, uh, you know, have the most impact on, on your life directly, and it's surprisingly accessible. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe below and follow our journey uh, here at Overgrown Cannabis.